This is Tammy C. Walker, the owner of Dream Jar Reality. I created this channel to provide like love. How are you? Hope you are well. Wherever you are, all is well over here. Today, we are going to talk about how to stop expecting others to be our everything. You know, we put a lot on other people to be our sunshine, our rainbow, and the flowers. Whoa, what a tall order. The truth of the matter is, and a lot of people speak about this, everything we need is inside of us. When we look outside of us, it sets up these high expectations of someone else. And when they don't do whatever it is we deem they should do, we're mad. I have heard this over and over, and a good employee, they turn in their resignation. You know, manager, bloop, blah, bloop, I decided I'm leaving. You know, I found a better opportunity. The manager, big mad, but hurt. Big mad. How could they leave? Da, 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 da. A, that is not your company. B, if you have a good employee, it's really a, a compliment to you as a manager if they leave because hopefully, prayerfully, you were a good mentor or role model for them and you taught them a lot and they're ready to move on to bigger and better things. C, get out your feelings. As Jasmine Sullivan said, it don't make any kind of sense. If you hire a smart individual, smart, professional, educated, you know they're not staying with you, especially if they're young, even middle age, they're leaving. Enjoy the time you had with that employee and they're moving on. Why are you mad? Why, When you go to high school, 12th grade, you out, you graduate. When you go to grammar school, 8th grade, you graduate. You move on. You get your bachelor's degree. You move on to an MBA or your master's. It's just forward movement, progression. Expectations of others to be what you want them to be. Even people get mad over these type of things. You coming to my party? You coming to my event? No, I'm not going to make it. They big mad. Do you know how much stuff people have to do? Sometimes people have social anxiety. Sometimes they're depressed. Sometimes they are dog tired. Sometimes they're low on money. They don't want to come to your event because they have to spend money on a gift or pay for whatever. You don't know somebody's story. Stop having high expectations of others. I used to throw parties a lot for my birthday. I don't calm down after my mom passed and I really stopped after COVID. But when people couldn't make it, they couldn't make it. It's okay. You celebrate the ones that can. Everybody's not going to be able to be everything you need. We got to cut that out. Somebody breaks up with you. You hate them. They the worst person ever. You know what? That person could be struggling with depression. But see, people, they're not ready for those conversations. What I'm learning is this. People only want grace when it pertains to them or their family. They don't care about nobody else. It's only about them. That's a really crappy way to be. And that's not cool. Give grace to people. Of course, when I'm talking about this, I'm not talking about anything toxic. Anybody abusive and toxic, that don't even apply to, to Dreams Are Reality channel. I'm talking about healthier people who make a decision like, you know what? I don't want to be in this relationship. Now people mad. They big mad. I used to be, I was like that before. Somebody broke up with me years ago and I'm just hotter than July. I mean, I'm, I'm hot. And when the person would call my phone, I'd be like, ugh, ugh, and I'm just mad. And one day after I got sick with cancer, it opened my eyes like, girl, you got to fight for your life. You don't have time to be mad at nobody or nothing at this moment. The person called and I, and I sounded like I had some sense. And I'm like, don't be mad because the guy don't want to be with you. It's okay. And and that really delivered me that day when I talked to him, you know, quite nicely. We hurt ourselves. You think you winning when you have that behavior? You hurting yourselves. Somebody don't want to be with you. They don't want to be with you. It's a choice. Love is a choice. Anybody that's been married 30 years, they made that choice every morning to wake up and say, this is my wife. This is my husband. At any given moment, somebody could do 
a yarn and a stretch and look at you and say, baby, I want a divorce today. That's just how real it is. And guess what? That type of stuff happens. And, you know, people get butts hurt. I'm not saying somebody would want to leave you. You're like, ha ha, doing jumping jacks, the running man. They want to leave me. They want to leave me. I am happy. Of course not. But when you just sit there and hold on to it and be a victim, you're really screwing yourself because I've seen this one play out too. You mad. They don't want to be with you. Next thing you know, you see a wedding invitation. They don't want to get married to somebody else. People don't give a you know what. They don't care. So you got to have that same mentality. Of course, you're going to hurt. I'm not saying any of that. But it's where you stay. You know, sometimes you got to process that pain and move through the hurt. You know, we, we missed the mark. We mad. We upset. And you look around. You live in like a beautiful place. You you got the best view in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? But you mad. I used I had to work with a homeless client. And this was when I was an intern. And it was below zero in the winter. And he was sleeping in his car. And I fought like heck to get him in a shelter. But because he was homeless and I think he was afraid, you know, he had seen so much stuff in those shelters, he wasn't trusting nobody. And it broke my heart. And I had like maybe $7 on me. I don't carry a lot of cash. He hadn't eaten anything for the day. He smelled terrible. And it was just the saddest thing. And I gave him some money. You know, I said, you got to take this. You got to eat. And luckily, the place I was interning at, it was a mental health facility. They gave out gift cards. Like, you can get $25 gas card, $25 Walmart card. I gave him both. But that felt like I didn't do anything that day. And it bummed me out. I think he came back maybe two to three times. But he he was living in his car in below zero weather. You know, sometimes it's about rejoicing for what we do have. You can't really count what you don't have. What you what do you have? Do you have a nice space to live in? Are you able to get in the car and drive? Or are you able to get on public transportation and get around? Can you get an Uber or a Lyft? Do you have a flat screen TV, a TV? computer look i mean i look around and I, I i'm just looking at my apartment right now i'm looking at two laptops one is my jobs one is mine i got two cell phones i got a flat screen tv i mean I, my diffuser is going with essential oil i'm living a life of luxury i, I don't live like you know up, well i live in a decent place i can't sit up here and downplay it but i'm not like you know penthouse or downtown chicago but i'm very 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 blessed and those are the things that keep me going I was able to get out of my bed this morning. I have a very comfortable bed. You know, I'm just a blessed girl. And those are the things I hold on to. I can't worry about who don't want me, who didn't do this for me, who not that for me. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, you know, it's like really a waste of life. You're wasting life. And, you know, that's kind of one thing that got me out of my depression. And when I speak of depression, I'm not talking about somebody clinically depressed. They need medication. I never, never talking about that. I'm talking about more situational. I remember being depressed sometimes. And this is what embarrassed me. I was like, what if I die today? This is my last day on earth. And God, you know, Jesus, God. And I'm, that's how I'm going to show up. Man, she spent her last day feeling sorry for herself. And that kind of perked me up. I know it sounds, maybe it sounds relatable, maybe not. But I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that way if I know I could turn it around. How do you turn around a depressed day? How do you turn around your life when you feel like you're in a slump? I use a lot of techniques. Like for me today, I'm going to go on a long walk on my lunch break. I'm not depressed, but I'm just saying these are things I do to pump myself up. I put, I get a playlist of about uh, two hours worth of music. I put my earbuds in. I jam out. I take, I, I get my vacuum cleaner out. I clean my house if I'm, if I know I'm feeling some type of way. I grab my keys. I go for a ride. I might go to Target. Y'all know that's my that's my spot. That's my gym. I might have to get two things. I still go in Target and my backup is a scoop of ice cream or something. You know, it's a lot of ways you can trick the mind. You got to decide, am I going to be down or am, am I going to be happy? And the way to do that, do that is to busy yourself. I get on the phone with Miss Laura, who's 94, or I phone a friend that's very upbeat. I phone my older sister, who's always positive. You got to do what you got to do. You got to fight for your life. But don't have expectations of other things 
and people to make you happy. I think people think if I get that Ferrari Testarossa, I'm going to be happy. If I get those red bottom shoes, I'm going to be happy. When I get my new house, I'm going to be happy till you get that NICOR gas bill here in Chicago in the dead of winter. That's $500. You didn't budget that in or till you need a new air conditioner unit that's $5,000. You didn't budget that into that new house. So that's why things like that. It's, it's short-lived. Like, you feel happy with a new car till you see the first payment. I know I do. I'd be like, oh, I love my new car. Damn, I forgot I got to pay for this. Like, we can't put expectations on people, places, or things, shiny objects to make us happy. It just doesn't work. It's fleeting. All right, I'm going to hit my mark. I'm trying to be shorter with these podcasts and videos. But don't don't expect the world of people. Don't expect that. I'm not saying have low expectations. I'm saying get the happiness inside that way when they come with your bouquet of flowers it's addition to your happiness if they want to take you out bonus if they want to do stuff for you bonus you know but if you already happy that's that's the that's the foundation you know i'm not saying every day but i'm saying be grateful and don't expect people to be your world you don't know what they dealing with they may have mental illness and they didn't reveal it you don't know the depths of somebody else's stuff. So I'm making a declaration for myself. I'm responsible for me. Tammy Sharice Walker signing off. Drop me comments. Let me know what you think. Have a good day. Bye.